Okay, so um, uh, thank you for attending this talk. I'll discuss about um, uh, large-scale trust-based collaboration, some topics that we are doing in uh, our research team uh, that is called COAST at INRIA in France. So I'll structure my talk in uh, three parts. The first one, I'll uh, just give a, a brief overview about uh, my CV, and then uh, I'll talk about, uh, um, about INRIA, our research uh, uh, institute, and then I'll talk about the main topics that we do in the team, and then more specifically later on, on some topics that we work in collaboration with, uh, um, with the Department of Psychology and Valérie Chenin in particular. So um, I, um, I am coming from uh, Romania, let me see it here, uh, and from this part that is called Transylvania, I'm sure most of you know Dracula, so Dracula mm -hmm. is coming from that part. But then, uh, so I did a master in computer science um, uh, in, in the town called Cluj. And after, I uh, moved to a richer country in Switzerland, where I did, um, where I did a PhD at ETH uh, Zurich. Uh, and uh, later on, I moved uh, to a country where gastronomy is very good, in France. Uh, and uh, uh, where I did a postdoc, and after uh, I I um, mm -hmm. uh, I am a, uh, since 2007 I am a permanent researcher at INRIA. Um, so uh, some words about uh, INRIA. Uh, INRIA is a, a French inst uh, research institute on communication science and technologies. Uh, it is uh, under the authority of the Ministry of Research and Ministry of Industry in France. So this means we are doing uh, uh, some research, but the, the main goal is to transfer this research to industry. We also have some activities on uh, education and training. So uh, in collaboration with the universities that are near this research institute, we are allowed to supervise uh, PhD students and to do uh, some, to supervise master thesis and to have some interns. So um, we are uh, 4,400 people in Inria. Uh, among those, there are 3,600 scientists, and the rest are uh, uh, people from administration. Uh, th there are eight centers. Uh, we see here they are all over in France. And um, the, we have a budget of uh, two, uh, 230 million euros. None in the South France, huh? very South yeah. France. <laughs> uh, there is one, there is one. There is one? Uh, oh, uh, yeah, so Marseille. At, at the sea, at the sea, oh, this is okay. at the sea. Yeah. And Sophia, everybody wishes to go there. <laughs> and to me, I got a, po I, um, when I uh, was in 2007, I received a position uh, being uh, assistant professor there or uh, having a research position in non -sea. But I chose a research position because it's much better than uh, uh, being an associate professor. Associate professor, they have, um, they have a lot of teaching uh, activity. Mm. They have to teach uh, 200 hours per year, uh, which is a lot. And uh, um, uh, we at INRIA, uh, we don't need to teach. But if you want, we can teach and we are paid additionally. So in this way, we can choose what we want to teach. And usually I teach at the master level. Uh, it's more interesting than maybe teaching at graduate. Yeah. So uh, I, I chose this position. Um, so uh, we are organized into, into teams of people. So we are something like uh, 170 uh, research teams. And uh, um, these teams, they, they have the possibility of doing some collaboration with other teams all over the world. And there are something like 80 associated teams, and one of them, it's the team that we have with, um, with uh, Valérie, so with the Department of Psychology, and from this year, also, uh, also with your team. Yes? Uh, so, uh, INRIA is, um, is uh, focusing on five main research domains. One of them is applied mathematics, computation, and simulation. Then we have algorithmics, programming, software, and architecture. Then network systems and services, distributed mm -hmm. computing. Our team belongs to this third team. Uh, 
the serve the um, serve the uh, uh, topic area, and um, then we have a perception, cognition, and interaction. So I think uh, the from the topic of of your team, you would belong to this uh, to this um, um, to this part. Then uh, we have also on digital health, biology, and earth. Uh, so, as I said, we are organized into, into teams. Uh, a team is composed uh, by uh, several people. Uh, there is a scientific leader, uh, uh, which is, uh, it, it is very important, this idea of scientific leader. I mean, if the leader doesn't want, uh, doesn't want to continue to lead the team, then everything goes down, there is no more team. Uh, uh, and uh, um, so inside we have people coming from, uh, there are permanent positions. Uh, so we have associate professor, professors, or uh, also uh, researchers coming from different research institutes. One of them is INRIA, but there is another one. This is called CNRS. And um, uh, the, the, the lifespan of a team, it is four years. So they, they let us, uh, when we propose a, a project, they let us go for four years. And then we are evaluated. If everything goes well, we are extended for four more years. And after um, after arriving at 12 years, we have to repropose something new. It cannot be the same that we proposed before. Um, yeah. uh, so this about Inria. Now I'll talk about uh, what we are doing in our team that is called Coast. So we are all working on uh, distributed collaborative systems that allow. Uh, uh, that allow people from different locations to work uh, on the same set of documents uh, at any time and from different devices. Um, if at the begin examples can be uh, wiki systems or version control systems, or uh, you are all familiar with Google Drive and Google Docs in particular. Um, and uh, uh, if at the beginning, um, when these systems were appearing, we are seeing uh, scenarios. Uh, with um, only involving several users, such as, for instance, writing a paper. Uh, nowadays, we see um, a change in, uh, in the scale of uh, co this collaboration. So uh, we are talking not about users, but now we can talk also about community of users using those systems. Examples of such uh, large-scale collaboration um, are um, uh, results of this large-scale collaboration uh, are Wikipedia, where, for instance, you have a um, community of users that go and edit a page uh, when there is an event going on. Or uh, we have the open source projects, where uh, you have a community of developers that go and uh, contribute to, to uh, source code to several projects. Or uh, it can also be during uh, conferences where you have a community of participants that take notes on the talks that are going on. Uh, existing systems uh, have some limitations. Uh, most of them are based on a, um, on a, a central authority that is uh, maintaining all user data. And uh, um, uh, this can be a problem, is a, a threat from privacy reasons. So users have to uh, uh, have to trust uh, uh, the third-party uh, service providers to give their data, and then the service provider, in fact, can do whatever he wants with this data. Um, then another problem is um, scalability. Uh, so uh, usually these systems uh, restrict the number of users that can access at a certain moment of time. So for instance, Google Doc, uh, it has a limit of 50 users uh, that can edit a document at the same time. But you know, I thought the Google, all the data would be encrypted. So the issue of privacy is just a theoretical one, right? I mean, reality. Yes, is but the point data? is, uh, most of them. Uh, okay, so it's, a it's, it's good issue. if it's good if they encrypt. It is but encrypted. I mean, this is yeah, HTTPS. Yes, but not all of them encrypt. Okay, Google encrypts, but then the problem is they keep the keys on the server. So if there is an attack, the attacker find the, uh, <laughs> finds the key and. Uh, uh, can decrypt everything. Also, yes. Actually, what's the limitation with Git and software control as well? Uh, there is no limitation there for the people that use. But um, uh, if there are a lot of people, you know, if you if you use, uh, we are using in our team when we write papers. 
uh, we, we use Git or when we write projects, okay? But as the deadline approaches, uh, before the deadline it's easy. We distribute, you do this, you do this, you do this, but as the deadline approaches, then everybody is going throughout all the paper to do all the changes they can do at the last moment. Uh, one is fixing the references, others are going to check the misspellings. So, uh, in fact, there are a lot of conflicts and we spend our time resolving conflicts. So it's awful uh, when you arrive to the deadline. I haven't seen yes. any conflict in the Google Doc. Uh, okay, I, I, she was asking about Git. Okay, yeah, yeah. okay now I've about... Experienced conflict. I've been very uncomfortable. Yes, they have conflict. But, um, in Google Doc, there is uh, no conflict because they, there is always a possibility to they integrate all the changes of everybody. Mm -hmm. And they do, in fact, a, a, semantical, a, a syntactic merge. There is no semantic behind. The point is, uh, Google Doc, if you want to write in LaTeX, it's not possible. Okay? You should use then a shared LaTeX, for instance, or Overleaf. There are other tools. But um, uh, somehow they have problems of merging. And uh, 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 sometimes uh, you lose work. So when they don't know to do a merge of other people, they just go back to a version that they uh, saved before, and then you lose work. So wh while using those systems, uh, we used once with Valerie, and I, I, uh, I've seen that several of my changes were, were disappearing. And it wasn't my fault. Yeah, no. <laughs> no, it was not your fault. So actually, yes. in your problem. Okay, your I, so this is just the limitations. Okay, I, I mean, yes. you're investigating an approach which doesn't have to deal with conflict. You want a kind of uh, I didn't say yet what is our vision. Up to okay. now, it's just the limitation of the system. Next slide is what is our vision. Okay. Okay. So um, uh, uh, they have problems of scalability. So if you have a lot of people that work, there will always be problems. They, they, they limit the number of users. Uh, here I, I said about uh, Google Doc that limits the number to 50. They have also have some uh, administration costs. Uh, in the sense that a uh, big service provider uh, can can pay the cost of uh, maintaining the uh, big servers or running, not having problems. Uh, but um, if you if you want to build a system, you would not have the the money that a big service provider can afford. So in fact, uh, it's here, and then we are coming back to your question. Uh, so uh, our vision is uh, um, to build peer-to-peer -peer collaborative systems where user has its own data, and then it, it exchanges this data with the people that he wants, but without passing through a central authority. So uh, I, I don't need Google Doc to, to <coughs> collaborate with you, for instance. Uh, uh, I, I just send you directly the data you send me, so we have direct collaboration. Actually, yes. Actually, yes. If, for instance, number of collaborators is very high, yes. so it's very difficult to exchange data no. in a peer to peer approach. No, we have a system that is, uh, we will see on Friday, Gerald will present uh, the system that we have. So uh, we build the same functionality. Okay, we are not that advanced to offer all the functionality of Google, we are not uh, uh, an industrial. Okay. We are not in that, uh, but we have prototypes showing that it can work. So uh, you, um, in fact, you you invite uh, the people you want to collaborate with, and then you define. Okay, they when they exchange data, they go directly instead. So when you send data to the other people, let's see, all the people here in the room, uh, it is sent to all the people directly without passing through Google. How it's working now with Google Doc, you send the data, when you want to send the data to me, you send to Google, and then Google sends it after. It's doing some merging there, and then he sends back the data. Yeah. Um, so uh, th these systems uh, offer a better scalability. I can add a lot of other people, and I don't have problems of a bottleneck on the server. These systems are, uh, are for tolerant. So if one is uh, falling down, the whole system continues to function. Uh, how do you manage a single copy, though? Um, so uh, everybody has a copy of the document, and uh, it's, it's doing the modifications, OK? And then these modifications are sent to the other. And then uh, there is local, a sort of algorithm that is merging the changes that it receives from the other. So uh, we have this, what is called eventual consistency. 
that if I receive all the modifications from everybody, uh, uh, I will have uh, uh, the same copy as you if you received all the modifications. But what, uh, I mean, uh, I think you are still, uh, it's not a solution for conflict issue. Because yeah, the 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 the, conf, uh, the conflict issue. Yeah, it's not it's not uh, resolved. Uh, I mean, there is there is the same problem that you have in the other in Google Doc. I mean, when when you receive changes from everybody, now you have a solution to merge those changes. Yes. Okay. So uh, what we have now is we apply the syntactical merging where we integrate the changes of everybody. It's like Google is so doing. But do, you, do you require clocks to be synchronized then? Yeah, we use, uh, we use some, uh, some distributed systems. Uh, oh yeah, clocks for, for knowing uh, if the operations are concurrent. It's Google is also doing that. But I, I, um, uh, in order to see all, this, um, all these details, I invite you to come Friday and Gerald will talk about this, particularly all the all the algorithmic issues there, yeah, yes. So uh, conflicts, I, I don't, I, I deal in the same way as Google Doc is dealing. I mean, but let's uh, not compare yeah. with Google Doc. Yeah. Let's compare with Git model. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So um, Git model, uh, when you have conflicts in Git or in SVN, uh, uh, co the conflict, the unit of conflict, is the line. Okay. Yeah. In Google Doc and in what we do, if you want to make real-time collaborative editing, the, the, the unit is the character. Okay? So in Git, in fact, if there are two people that modify the same line, it is a conflict. Yeah. While in Google Doc, this is not a conflict. They will integrate both the changes. If you write in the same line, if one is writing in OR, the other in the other, it will correct both. While if you do this in Git, you will have conflict. So we take the solution of Google Doc, okay, but we do better with the algorithms behind. And I always said that it would be very nice because your team is working on semantics. It would be very nice to have a, a semantic merge. To what detect. do you mean by semantics? Uh, yes. <laughs> so uh, I, we could define that if uh, there are two people that modify in the same world, Maybe there is, there is should be really a conflict, or if the the grammar, if you apply the the grammar uh, for a sentence, if you have errors, it's there something problem. I don't know. I don't know yet, but just the idea. I feel the need. It could be could but be helpful. Because to the finest grain actually conflict resolution is character based. We don't have Yeah, but depends on how you look. So I can I can write your algorithms. At, at, each, at which level of granularity you want. I can write at character level, I can write at word level, I can write at sentence level. Yeah. We can write those algorithms at which level of granularity we want. But we chose, in, I mean, to, to, to show that we are better than Google, we chose the, the same way as Google, you know, and also in real time collaboration, it's you want to see every character of the other person if you, if you want that it's real time. In Git, it's not real time. In Git, you don't know who's working with you at a certain moment. Uh, yeah, but the point is that because it has a central central place, you don't no. have to send. No, no, it will be the same thing if it's the do. conflict, the the um, the merging conf, uh, the merging uh, the algorithms for merging. Uh, it's an, it doesn't depend if you have a central authority or not from the point of view of the conflict. <laughs> yeah, c c come on Friday, <laughs> to see the talk of Gerard, you will see what it is. Okay. okay. Uh, my talk is not about, not, not about <laughs> that. Uh, so, um, uh, in, in this kind of topic, we are working on, uh, on uh, three main parts. So the first one is uh, exactly what we talked about now, is how to maintain consistency of different copies. So you have users that use uh, uh, copies of the documents. So it's like uh, when you use Google Doc, each one has a copy. And then uh, it's what are the algorithms that, that we create in order to, um, to maintain consistency uh, of uh, the, the concurrent modifications. So uh, how do I integrate your changes and you integrate my changes such that at the end we see the same thing. Okay. So this is one part uh, 
uh, we are working on. Then another part is we, we wanted to evaluate uh, um, the collaborative systems and approaches that we develop. Because uh, uh, most of the time we develop systems and uh, 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 we don't know, in fact, how the users use those systems. So uh, we wanted to investigate this. Yes? Yes. And then um, uh, another topic we are working on is uh, um, how to provide a security mechanism. Uh, I call it light because uh, it's not like traditional uh, security mechanism. But uh, we take another approach. Um, we, uh, we give access to the data to the user at the beginning. We, we, we trust the user at the beginning. We give him the data. And afterwards, we look to what the user is doing with this data. And if I'm not satisfied about the experience I have with this user, I will decrease uh, the, the trust that I have in this user, and I will not give him next time the data. So this is the kind of... Uh, so the user will not participate uh, as well as anybody else, uh, somebody else will participate in the same document? Um, so here it's, uh, we are talking about uh, how, how can I decide to give the data to somebody or not? Uh, yeah, the, the, the data, file, the document. The, the document, document as a whole. The document can be as a whole or can be uh, at the final uh, granularity level or the operations. What does it mean to do final granularity, sharing a document, part of the document? Does it, how, it uh, the, uh, it's that. possible that you, that you want to, we have some cases like that, that you want to share with, uh, uh, for instance, you work in a, in a project with uh, other partners, okay? And uh, you want f some part that is done by the people in your group, okay? And the other part by the other persons, okay? And you want, uh, maybe you didn't finish yet the, the part you want to work on, and you want to share with other people, but not everything. So you could say, uh, uh, I can share only some part of those, and the other part, uh, it's uh, maybe I don't want, I don't want uh, for them to modify it, for instance. So you just let them read, but don't modify it. There are some cases where you look for this final granularity when you want to. So, so this is explicitly part. done by the owner. Yes, yes. Okay. But the other but, thing that but you But the owner. But then we talk in this peer to peer. Is after I give you the document and I'm the owner. I created it. When you receive it, you are also a sort of owner. Now you have it the document. So you know it's this uh, delegation. It's m more complex. <laughs> I'll wait for more details on that. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't talk very much in detail. I'm more, uh, I'm more concentrated on the user aspect, but we can talk afterwards and I can give at the moment some more details. Um, so, um, for the first part on user studies, um, we, we wanted to look at the aspect of scalability. So, in, in Google Doc, in fact, if you, we observe that if you have a lot of users that write in a document, uh, you will see some delays uh, between the user is writing something in the document, and this modification is seen by the other users. And um, these delays are in fact caused by, uh, by several reasons. One, one of them is the network delay, which is uh, due to the physical communication technology. It can be uh, copper wire or optical fiber. Yeah. Uh, then uh, another reason is the time complexity of consistency maintenance algorithm. Okay, so uh, you receive the operations, but if you have an efficient algorithm, delays will be uh, less than if you have a non-efficient algorithm. And then also depends on the types of architecture. Uh, so uh, the first one is the thin client architecture. In fact, where all the computation are done on the server. And uh, uh, in this case, uh, when you have a user that wants to transmit a modification to the other user, it sends to the server and then the server processes it. It has all the requests from everybody, it processes it, it's, pro it's doing the merge or it's doing some processing there and after sends to the other users. And in this case, the delay is higher than if you use a thin client architecture where each client is doing a computation locally. Uh, so, uh, our main uh, question was, uh, uh, how does delay influence the group performance? So, uh, what we did, uh, at the beginning we tried to see what are the delays 
and Google Doc. So what we did is we simulated the user. So uh, we, we have written some agents, some robots, that uh, are simulating users by typing in a document, in the same document. So here on the x-axis, we have the increasing number of users. We could go only till 37, because after, after 37, even Google is saying it's 50. It's not true. After 37, 35, uh, 37, 38, it, it kicks out the new user. And uh, we, we measured the delays. And uh, we see that uh, up to 10, up to 10, uh, it's working fine, there is n not a lot of delay, but afterwards the, um, uh, the behavior is uh, very unstable uh, and sometimes it can arrive even to uh, 17 seconds. So now our... Is, so you're talking about 5 seconds, 10 seconds to see what is happening? Uh, yes, to, to, so, so uh, we simulated I, these if, users are writing, are writing with a certain frequency. Here for this one is two second frequency. We tried even with other frequencies, which is a normal typing frequency. Mm -hmm. Two seconds. Two, uh, every two seconds, one character is passed on. Is uh, every two seconds? No, every every yeah, every two seconds, yeah, uh, user is writing, and then this, uh, this these uh, changes are sent to the others. Every two seconds. Yes. Okay. Yes. 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 Um, and uh, uh, then we observe so these delays are uh, till one so user is, is a, writing. Is there a kind of a Consistency is kept at every two second thing, so everything uh, you know that if uh, so, so far as two guys are not writing on the same word in the two seconds time frame, you'll be okay. Is that what it means? Uh, no, so it doesn't matter where you write, it's every two seconds, so the user is writing and then it sends this modification to the server. Okay, and when the changes arrive from different users, mm. uh, the, the server is processing. Is doing some processing, is computing what is the merging, and then he sends back to the users what is the answer. It's working like this. So, so this delay are from the moment a user typed a character. Every two second, the client will be sending the data to the server. Yeah, uh, yeah, and, and uh, so between one one user is typing and the others see that modification. So the config resolution, all that takes fifteen seconds. Yes. Yes, 15, 70 seconds if there are many users. Yeah. So now uh, uh, the, the main, uh, uh, the, the main uh, yeah. yes. Yes. So our um, uh, we tried to set up an experiment uh, to to test what is the effect of delay on users. Now uh, if. We couldn't do a real setup because, uh, um, for instance, I, I could have gone in a conference and say everybody now edits, uh, um, uh, takes notes using a Google Doc. But the point is, uh, even if I do that, if I convince the people to use Google Doc such that I, I can test, the point is that uh, Google doesn't give us the traces. Google doesn't want to uh, give us the traces even if they anonymize them. They don't want to do that. Uh, so, um, uh, what we did is uh, we mapped the real-world setting to a laboratory task where uh, we gave, we just took several users and we give them some tasks to do and we inserted delay without that the users know that. So, um, everything, uh, this we have done in collaboration with Valerie. So, she helped us uh, with all the settings for, uh, for the... Um, for writing questionnaire, for the consent form. For, she learned us for the methodology because we didn't know at all. Yes, uh, and um, uh, so what we did is we did experiments with uh, 20 groups of four students and we asked them to uh, do some uh, collaborative editing task. The first one was a proofreading task. We have given them a text in French with several errors and we asked them to correct those errors. The second task was we gave them a list of movies. Uh, we asked them to, uh, to go and look on, on, on a browser, to use a browser to find out the year of release of those movies, and then to uh, order the movies according to their uh, year of release. And the third task, uh, we asked them to listen to an audio. It was about cloud computing. And uh, we asked them to take notes. So. Uh, uh, we asked them to use a collaborative editor, 
uh, ether pad that is uh, open source, so we could instrument it uh, in order to be able to take the traces of collaboration, and uh, we, where we were also able to insert some delays. So each, uh, uh, each, u each group of users, they had a certain delay, but they didn't know that. Yeah. So uh, we registered user keyboards and we also recorded uh, user activities on the desk. So uh, uh, I'll, I'll show some examples of the kind of problems that appeared in each of the tasks. So uh, the first one uh, was the task where uh, the text contained some errors and we asked them to correct those errors. So for those of you who know French, so here it's peu présenté. So here, uh, this is not correct, so we should change this E at the end with an ER. And what happened, in fact, is that uh, if two users uh, were going to change the same word uh, at the same time, yes, so because of the delay, none of the users see that the other is doing the same thing. And because of the delay, in fact, what happened is that both users changed and they went away then from that word. They thought everything is changed. And at the end, uh, the word is corrected twice, which results in another error. So, excuse Yes. So isn't there any way to check it in the dictionary or somewhere? Yeah, this is what I call semantic, uh, <laughs> semantic merging. Could be something that could check, yeah. Uh, for the mo if you do the same thing uh, in Google Doc, it's uh, the same thing uh, appears, yeah. If there is some, uh, if if you go immediately to write, and uh, there is some delay between you write, you will go, you will not look there, and uh, um, it will be, uh, it will happen the same phenomenon. Uh, the same thing happened in the, uh, in the sorting task, where, uh, for instance, for for several movies, we had uh, two users that wanted to add the year of release, so they added both, so then the year was in double, or also. Um, uh, there were some cases where, uh, after putting the year of release, the users wanted to order uh, the, the the movie in ascending order. So they uh, they moved the, the movie to the right place. And if there are two users that move the movie to the right place, then in fact the movie is, is simulated by a delete and insert. And at the end, you will have the movie in double. Uh, for the so for this the is for four, six, eight. 10 seconds or just yes. some of it? Uh, for zero seconds, it doesn't appear. For four, um, uh, sometimes, but not very often. It starts then later. I'll have some statistics. Yeah. So uh, for the third task, for the note taking, what we, what we have seen is that uh, also because of the delay, where well, there's a lot of delay, uh, if you have several users that hear the same uh, sentence in the audio, uh, they, they will want to write down, but because of the delay, they think they are the only one that is taking notes on that sentence, so they write out the whole sentence. The others do the same, and what's happening is that at the end you have a, re a redundancy on the same idea. Uh, so here it's, uh, I depicted uh, uh, the, the, the idea of uh, uh, dematerialized uh, computer science. So uh, it is depicted three times, but with different words. But it's the same idea. So they did a redundancy. There. So still yes. uh, redundancy, yeah. redundancy is a sort of conflict. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. If you see it, yes. Yes. Uh, so uh, what we looked at, uh, we looked at several measures. So um, in order to see if what the users have given at the end. Uh, uh, if, they, if their notes were good or not. Uh, we looked at uh, the number of keywords they depicted compared to uh, if you would have a transcript of that audio. So we looked at the proportion of the number of keywords that they had in their final summary compared to the total number of keywords existing in the transcript. And uh, we also looked at uh, redundancy. So uh, how many times an idea was depicted at a certain moment, okay? And uh, we also looked at the error rate, so how many errors uh, they had uh, at the end, okay, compared to the total number of words. Okay, it's not only at the end, we looked also over the time, okay, but at any moment we looked uh, 
how, how the number of errors uh, exist in their current version of the document. Uh, and then we also looked at, uh, at the chat because they were able to use a chat in order to coordinate during the, the, the task. And we also analyzed the, the, um, the questionnaire responses. So in fact, uh, uh, what, we, what we observed is, uh, um, so here we have the, the delay condition. Okay, so it's the, the conditions that we have in our experience, experiment uh, four, six, eight, or 10. And here we have the groups that, uh, that were in that condition. And uh, we looked at the error rate. So error rate is in blue. Okay, so for instance here, I have, uh, this is, uh, uh, the, the, we use the box plot, yeah. So here is, the, I have the, um, the, the, the error rate for uh, the groups in condition four. And we see there is a correlation there. So uh, as the delay increases, the error rate increases. Uh, it's the same for, um, for the redundancy, which is in red. As the delay increases, the, the redundancy increases. And then we looked uh, here, we looked at the uh, proportion of keywords, yeah, which is in red. So we see uh, as the delay increases, they, uh, uh, they, they take less keywords than it should be. Yeah? So we see a decrease in the number of keywords. So um, design implications from this study. Uh, so it's important to reduce the delay by the choice of the architecture and synchronization algorithm. And uh, uh, yeah, we, we, we have done this, so we, uh, we have some, some new, uh, some new uh, synchronization algorithm where um, the, the delays will be no, not a problem. So uh, I invite you again so to come on Friday to the talk of Gerald. Uh, and then another solution is uh, to, um, if the systems, if they have some delays, if there is some delays, it's very important to, to detect those delays and tell to the users that there is some delay. Because users will then try to, um, to adapt to this condition and try to organize differently, is what we saw, but I, I did not present in detail. There were some, some, some users that, uh, uh, in fact, it's, it's strange, it's, it was for the for the non-experienced users, non-experienced means not using collaborative editing. Uh, they didn't know, in fact, uh, what is the delays and uh, what is means real-time collaboration. And when they noticed this kind of delay, they organized better uh, in the chat. So they said, I will take, uh, I will work on this part of the document, you work on the other, and the other will work on the other part. While uh, the experienced ones, um, in fact, they were used with, uh, with no delay, and uh, they got annoyed somehow, and, but they were keeping on typing fast, so they resulted in more errors and in more redundancy. Yeah. Uh, and then I talk, I um, switch now to another topic that we were investigating also together with Valerie. Uh, so uh, in our team, we want to um, propose an access control mechanism that is working for peer-to-peer -peer architecture. Uh, the, the, what are our requirements are that um, I don't want to use a central authority. So traditional access control mechanism, they are based on a central authority that is saying uh, this, this user has access to this and this documents. So I don't want this central authority because our peer-to-peer -peer architecture doesn't use a central authority. And I also want a mechanism that is easy to use by users not very complex cryptographic mechanism. Okay. Uh, and um, uh, so in, in, uh, in our vision, uh, we propose, we propose uh, using lightweight uh, security mechanism is where I said before. So uh, at the beginning, maybe I trust the user. I give him some data. And then according to the collaboration that I have with this user, I will adjust the trust value and then if, if he deceived me in the, in the collaboration, then next time, uh, because his trust value is very low, I, I will not exchange uh, uh, the data with him anymore. Yes? So how is this trust score calculated? Is it yes. <laughs> yes, yes, that's the, that's that's the key point. <laughs> yes, that's the issue. And I, I'll show in some, in, some, um, in some specific scenarios and applications how, how did we compute. 
uh, yeah, so th this is the, the main challenge, how to compute this trust. Uh, so uh, we uh, we propose several. We are working in several uh, ways of computing this trust. So one of them is uh, to measure the quality of user contribution. Uh, so uh, if users are contributing to a document, I can measure uh, what is the quality of what they have uh, written. If it improves the final quality of the document or not. And uh, up to now, so uh, we are using. Uh, traces of Wikipedia, and we are using uh, machine learning techniques, uh, we use deep learning, uh, for, um, for classification of the quality of uh, Wikipedia documents. Why, yes. why would that uh, give you anything? Um, because uh, the quality that you uh, can get, I mean, the, the, the really depends on semantics, uh, amount, you know, the, the yes. uh, small change. Yes. For example, if I uh, if uh, TK is evaluating uh, an e equation and corrects an equation, that's a big change that mm -hmm. he's making mm -hmm. compared to yes. if I edit 10 different words. And, yeah. Yes, yes. So it's it's an ongoing project. We are uh, working with the Wikimedia Foundation. Mm. I have this summer, uh, my PhD student will go to do an internship there. Mm. So up to now what we did, in fact, is just, it's just a simple classification mechanism mm. according to, uh, we just measure the quality of the document, okay? So not yet the contribution, individual contribution. Mm. So up to now, uh, so uh, uh, Wikipedia documents can be classified into six classes. Mm. Okay, that they have provided, and then they took experts, mm. they took uh, some experts in those fields, and asked the uh, users, um, those experts, to manually rate the documents, mm. to be in one of these categories. And what are the six categories? Um, uh, no, if I didn't, <laughs> it's FA, BA, okay, it doesn't mean if I say the letter. So one is uh, that it can be uh, very easy, understandable. Okay, Compl uh, difficulty of... Complete, yeah, uh, d d yeah, difficulty, lexical, it can be read by... Lexical complexity or, uh, you know, because, again, um, if, uh, if, if you, you know, if the article is in deep learning, I mean, the, you know, Monere can read better than I can and... Uh, you know, if article is in knowledge representation, I can read better than them. Mm -hmm. So it's a very subjective thing about uh, whether it's, uh, uh, what is the difficulty level of an article. No, I think yeah, they, they, no they one ranking was that written by expert in a finished state was another yeah. one is just if you want, starting I can look exactly to see, I, well, I can tell you after not to lose time, okay? Yeah. <laughs> so there are this, uh, there are these uh, six categories. Uh, and uh, um, in fact, uh, there are different mechanisms, different machine learning mechanisms that mm -hmm. could be applied in order, so, so you have the, the testing uh, phase where you know exactly that certain, certain articles belong to certain categories, mm -hmm. and now I have another set of documents, and I have to classify those into those categories, mm -hmm. okay? And now uh, there are mechanisms that uh, work, most of the mechanisms existing, they work on um, on, on the features of these Wikipedia pages, such as number of words, uh, number of references, number of uh, articles that reference this page, uh, uh, number of citations, uh, and mm. other criteria. So okay? I have yes. one question. As Dr. Shed also mentioned, it is very subjective because, for example, consider the word choose. Yes. How can you discriminate which word is, like the word you choose is better than the word I choose to explain the same concept? How can you assess the quality, which quality of editing is better? Uh, so, so now I'm talking about uh, the quality of a Wikipedia page, okay? Mm -hmm. So uh, we are not yet evaluating the contribution of a particular contribution of user, okay? Mm -hmm. This we do later on. Mm -hmm. it's, it's the final goal would be nice if we achieve a solution. So now I look to a document and I have to assess if that document is of good or of bad quality according to the six classes. So actually, what's the feature for this classification? Uh, the, the features, uh, I, uh, I, I said we, there are several features there. There are uh, Wikipedia, Wikimedia Foundation, which is very much uh, interested on assessing the quality. They want to encourage users to, to, have, uh, to, to edit those documents. They are very interested of noticing to users which are the documents of low quality, such that they improve them. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they have up to now the the latest uh, the latest set of features. Uh, it is implemented in a service that is detecting uh, uh, 
the quality to give feedback exactly immediately to the users. Uh, they use uh, 25 features. Okay, so uh, now I don't know all of them by heart, but there is number of words, as I said, number of references, number of citations, okay. and then you have also number of words over number of citations, all these features because they, they mix them to see which gives a better, uh, a better result for the classifier. Okay, okay. so uh, in this work we did, uh, we did some work on, uh, on adding some more features. We added the uh, uh, readability score which improves better. That is, we added several, okay? Okay, and another solution that we adopted, which is quite new, it was uh, just uh, accepted now, uh, it will be present, it was just presented uh, since two weeks. Uh, we applied uh, deep learning. We just get, uh, use, I don't know, I guess if you know, doc to vec Word to vec okay. Okay, so we just let, let uh, 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 DNN learn about the documents and we achieve comparable classification with the very sophisticated uh, machine learning uh, mechanism that use uh, uh, classification and use a sort of features that maybe are not a complete set of features and so on. So uh, this we published, I can give you the reference, that we published at GCDL, Joint Conference on Digital Libraries. Yeah. So this is the main work that we did and now I have a, a my PhD student will go to Wikimedia Foundation and we will work on assessing the uh, quality of individual contributions of users. Mm. Interesting. Yes. Uh, okay, so this is one way of assessing, um, uh, would be a one way of assessing the trust that I have in a user according to the quality of the documents that he's writing, of the quality of contributions. And another way is um, I, had a, I had supervised a PhD uh, a student on um, Working on working on contracts in collaborative editing. So, in fact, when I when I share a document with somebody, is I specify. Uh, now I give you the document, but please do not distribute to the others. Or you have the right to edit this part of the document, uh, but not um, modify the other part of the document. So this kind of contract in collaborative editing. And then what we do is that we we share with these contracts, and then we looked at. Um, what they, if the user satisfied or not those contracts. And this idea can be applied also in the case of services composition. So for instance, you have Doodle, and you want, uh, when you fix a meeting, you want that Doodle has access to your uh, Google agenda, okay, to your Google calendar. And you want that Doodle is just looking at uh, if you are available or not at those moments of time, but he should not access to see what you are exactly doing at those moments. He doesn't want maybe that you go uh, uh, to a, a psychiatric uh, <laughs> hospital or something like that. So you don't want uh, that he's looking at details of uh, what's happening at those moments. So um, Doodle, uh, you, when you do this composition, you specify that Doodle should satisfy this confidentiality contract. And later on, if you, if you look, uh, you can check if Doodle respected or not this contract. And, um, if you see it was not respected, then you lose somehow uh, trust in, uh, in Duda. So, but there is already a risk uh, in giving access, so it's, a, it's more like an yes. open system to a closed system. Yes, to yes, a yes. This, I mean, this kind of model would maybe not apply to a banking uh, yeah. uh, stuff where uh, I, I have to have a certain trust in somebody, but it's in fact like this that we work uh, in day to day. I mean, so, so you define uh, what constitutes higher trust. So all yes. these things are automatically done uh, by your middleware. Yeah, the, yeah, the, the, yeah, yes, it's uh, done automatically by the system, and it shows uh, then to the user what is the computed trust. Yeah. So, so based on your trust model, uh, it looks like it cannot be applied in some cases. So, do you have classes of applications which are separate? Or uh, yeah, in collaborative editing, I mean, when you in open source projects and so on, it's uh, yeah. not a project. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, then so uh, also sharing. banking, banking uh, stuff. Maybe you trust your wife. Uh, okay, so you send her the information, but you don't trust somebody else. And then if you see that your wife would uh, spend uh, a lot of money uh, buying clothes and so on, maybe you would not give her next time. <laughs> 
I mean, it's like we function. We yeah. somehow we have to trust That's at what? certain point the people, and then uh, if it's yeah, but then depends on the person how much you are tolerant of uh, letting the other. Yeah. yeah. It's okay if she uses this example, but the guys don't use this example. That will be not acceptable. Okay, <laughs> But uh, the whole idea of peer-to-peer -peer collaboration okay. was to, one of the, what I could get is uh, to make sure there is a kind of uh, clear idea of trust and uh, mm -hmm. the, there is no breach of trust by central authority or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, but in that also, if there is a problem with opening up the system and then slowly closing it, then there are uh, we, there are clear cut areas where it cannot be used. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So there are some, yeah, some areas where it's maybe not suitable. Yeah. But our main main focus is collaborative editing, so they are okay. uh, the existing solutions are not satisfying. Okay. So uh, th there are very complex uh, security mechanisms, but where users have to uh, put their key, generate a private key, uh, it sometimes. That it's not easy to use. Yeah. So we we were proposing this, and also also the um, it's different than secu than than access control. Access control is just even if I have a good access control, okay? You give to a user the data because he had the right access. But what is happening afterwards? You know, you cannot know. And with the mechanism that we have in place, we look what's happening afterwards. It's called the usage control. Yeah, so we, we look more to usage control than access but, but, control. But the users who are collaborating here are not necessarily friends, right? I mean, they're strangers. Uh, yeah, it could be, could be that, that you don't know all the others. You don't know well all the others. And uh, this kind of uh, See, because when you do collaborative editing in, in, in the Google Docs sense, there's a mutual trust, but you're saying that we don't take that for granted, and we yeah, in that gain case, trust based on many other criteria yeah, yeah, that you have defined. Yeah, yeah. When it's for paper writing, you know the other people, but maybe, maybe if you want to develop, for Open instance, source, uh, uh, okay. yeah, or uh, write a Wikipedia, uh, wiki pages that you update from everybody, maybe. Uh, you have to so, trust the other. So a low trust, what will it do? It will discourage them from contributing <laughs> by increasing delay or things of that sort. I mean, is it that <laughs> carrot and stick kind of an approach? I mean, is that the goal? Uh, you, you mean I didn't get maybe? Uh, yeah, basically, uh, suppose I have low trust yes, according yes, to your system. Yes, yes. Then it will somehow discourage me from editing the Wikipedia page by increasing my delays or something of that sort. Uh, no, is, is it's not connection with the delay. So if you you have a lot, you say you have a lot trust in the alarm. No, suppose the system computes me, me as, a, as a low trust. Okay, when yeah. you collaborate with me, yeah, yeah. So then you will end up that uh, uh, some some users will not want to collaborate with you. Yes. So I'd be prohibited from contributing. Yeah, but this so the the, um, the trust is uh, between two users. So maybe there are some that still trust you. Okay. okay. Because it's maybe some of you, the, some of the some of them. So I'd be prohibited from contributing to your articles yeah, yeah, or something yeah. so, of that. Sort. Yes. So maybe for the editing part that you mentioned, we can also use this idea that give some priority to some individual yeah. user. Yeah. Like based on their trust or mm -hmm. something. Yes. Like this. Mm -hmm. yes. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so now uh, comes the part uh, um, we worked with Valerie. So um, now the point is, uh, okay, this idea of uh, trust-based collaboration is nice, but how can I validate if the users will accept it or not? So uh, the solution of building the system, okay, it takes a lot of time. We have some system built, okay, that's not a problem. The main problem is then uh, to find users that would wa would want to use your system for a for a long time, which is maybe very difficult to have that. So uh, w we uh, tried some simpler things. We just wanted to validate this collaboration by using some using uh, game theory experiments, where uh, in fact we build some sort of games, and we test if this idea would fit or not. So. Uh, uh, we looked at the uh, game theory, and uh, trust game was uh, very close to this collaboration. So, what is trust game? Is that um, 
if you have uh, uh, two users, okay, uh, they will have each one at the beginning a sum of money, 10 euros, uh, and um, uh, user one can send to user two an amount between uh, zero and 10. And this game is also called investment game, meaning that if you send a, a sum of money, when the, uh, when the amount arrives to this user, it is tripled. So here it sends eight, this user will receive a 24, three times eight, and he will have a balance of 38 euro. And then this, this user can send back to the other user uh, an amount between a zero and the maximum sum that they received. And in fact, uh, the way it is very close to the trust-based collaboration is that um, the sum of money you, you send to the other user is entirely attributable to the trust between those users. So if the user trusts the other one, he will send a lot of money. And if not, he will not send the money. And if, if no, but it, that, if that, that is with regards to a target, right? I mean, you notice that even if you trust somebody, it doesn't mean I'm going to send money if I don't have... Yeah, so, uh, but this is a game. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, this is what is called the trust game. So investigated, mm, uh, so this is what I said before, is uh, we wanted to uh, avoid building a big system and testing by uh, reducing the problem to a, to a game problem. And then we can observe better what is happening in this kind of setting. Uh, okay, so uh, it's working like that, the trust game. Uh, excuse me, I never understand. If yes. he's in trust, then what happened? Yeah. So uh, this user, you see here, he sent, he's, he had the 10 euro. Yes. That's he's right. deciding to send to the other eight. Okay, this is, it means he has somehow a trust in the other. He's giving him the money and he's hoping he will give me back. More. Yeah, yeah. If, if he's giving me back some of, uh, yeah, more than what I sent, then I, I gain. Yes. Okay, but I have to trust him to give this. If I give him a s small sum of money, he will, he will give me back, but they, it will not increase a lot my amount. So if, if there is a, a lot of trust between the users, reciprocal trust, then they will send a lot of money and they, each one will earn a lot, finally. So, so always trust should be there? Yes, so yes, a sort of trust, yes, yes. Except that uh, sometimes you can have users that want to cheat, so they send a lot, they send a lot, and finally they uh, send nothing, you know, in order that they keep for them. So they're a winner. Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> oh, only the short run. <laughs> no, because if, if, the, if the game continues... <laughs> so basically you're trying to quantify trust. Yes, yes. Winner and... Because if the dates no, if you send me zero, and you play next with me, and I saw you send zero, uh, then I will not send you. Yeah, in the and long run you won't win. <laughs> you are winner for the moment, but not for. Uh, well, you have to exit the game, right? Yes. That's when you have to exit the game. This is a concept of evolutionary game theory where we won over iterations. Yeah. And that, that's one of the advantages is that there's a, a huge literature on behavior in this game so that we have a way of comparing the effect of our manipulations to, to that literature yeah. instead of inventing something completely new. So yes. you may encounter each user again, yes. or you may not. Yes. 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 So, so the simple, that is the, the simple game, the simple game, uh, this is a good question. I mean, the simple game, it is, uh, I, I go once and I, I uh, give to the other and that's it, I finish. But then you have repeated games, uh, repeated games is where you play with the others and in fact it's in an anonymous way. Uh, you don't know with whom you play. This is the normal game. And um, uh, what we did is uh, uh, we proposed a trust metric that quantifies uh, the trust uh, between users according to how much the user are sending between them. So um, uh, as, as we talk about many rounds, uh, in a, in a, I, I compute the trust in a single round uh, from how much he sent as a, okay, it's a log, I don't explain it, uh, it is a logarithmic of, uh, a logarithm of the proportion the user can send, so the sending amount over the maximum that he can send, and uh, it is a logarithm of this, 
I compute the current thrust, and then I have an aggregate, uh, an aggregate thrust that is uh, over different rounds. And I have the final value uh, then computing over several rounds. And uh, this metric, we also show that is, uh, that is dealing with fluctuating user behavior. So exactly what uh, to avoid the behavior like you suggested. <laughs> <laughs> that if you, if, you, uh, if, you, if you give a lot and then uh, you don't give, and then you again you give in order to increase trust, and then you don't give, then I, uh, this metric will punish you, so will uh, classify you not as a good user. Let's so say like per attack. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, so we deal with this kind of attack, yes. yes. Um, okay, so uh, what we did, uh, we tried to see if in this kind of setting of the game, if I, um, if I show to a user what is the trust uh, of the other user, according to my previous interactions, if this will influence the user or not, if he will listen to my trust value, or not, if you will help or not. So this was the main, the main reason that we wanted to investigate. So uh, for this, um, we have done some user studies. Again, Valerie helped us with this. Uh, so uh, we did five sessions with six people. And uh, these six people were uh, playing between them. But they didn't know at one moment who's the other player. They were in different rooms. So they couldn't see who's the next player at a certain moment. So, um, and we did, we did uh, four games in order to be able to compare them. The first one, uh, it was the simple game, where this is the normal game, where I play anonymously with somebody and I don't know anything about that user. The other game, uh, this partner information game, is the one where we showed them uh, the trust score as computed by the trust metric. And then uh, we also looked uh, if this trust score could be played or it's better than showing a sort of identity of the other user. By identity, uh, we mean just a sort of nickname that we associated to the other user. It was green, black, uh, yeah, uh, something like this. And uh, I didn't know at one moment what is my identity. You, you could not know what is your identity. Uh, and sometimes you could even play against you. So we just wanted to see if, the, if a person is able to remember uh, these iterations between identities of several users and uh, the previous interactions that they had be between those users. So uh, for this we used uh, um, an implementation using Z3 that is very well uh, used uh, in uh, economical behavior. And um, at, uh, at the end of the game we gave to each participant a 10 euro gift card and to the participant that has the highest score we gave an additional 10 euro card. Because in, in Europe, we cannot use uh, Amazon Mechanical Turk. It would be ma much easier, but it's only for US people, so we could not use it. <coughs> uh, so uh, we looked at uh, several measures. We looked at. Uh, why, why can't it use in Europe? Because it is uh, extractive or something? Not no, respectful? No, if you go or? and try to do that, it requires uh, a US billing address. <laughs> oh, Amazon doesn't. We don't have that, uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, so I don't. If you guys can want us. to help. Yeah, we, we could use our address. I mean, we could yeah. <laughs> yeah, we didn't try to do that. And uh, then administration in France, it's, oh my God, uh, it's very complex. So they will not want to give, uh, even, for this, money. even for this, even uh, for this, for the cards that we give, they want uh, that I gather every signature of everybody and uh, to show them that I didn't spend for me the money. So. Uh, and I, I, I don't think they are able to pay uh, people, uh, they, they are not able to give us a car to say uh, you spend that amount. I mean, it's, it's, it's different, yeah. Uh, also here it's uh, strange when you enter to the building, there is no control, you know. And uh, in, in France we had a moment where there were these attack, uh, terrorist attacks and even now each time we have a car to enter, no, not everybody can enter. And then uh, we also have to show what are in our bags and so on. Yeah. So it's so there's a lot more security in uh, Europe, yeah. Mm -hmm. On that kind, yeah. US doesn't. Yeah. So uh, we looked at uh, uh, the net sending by senders. So what is the amount, uh, uh, the net amount sent by senders, the net amount sent by receivers, 
Uh, we also looked at percentage sent by senders and uh, by receivers. <coughs> and uh, we looked at several research questions. <coughs> so the first one was on the effect of trust score and identity on user behavior. So we wanted to know if uh, showing the partner trust score or the nickname, so I, I, I mean this black, uh, blue uh, um, identity that we have chosen, if, so either showing the trust score or the identity change the user behavior. And uh, uh, if yes, if there is a significant difference in behavior that uses only trust score compared to using only identity, and if there is a significant difference between user behavior by showing both trust score and uh, uh, showing only one of them. Because we had, I, we had this, again, these four games, one where we showed nothing, one where we showed identity, one where we showed trust score, and one where we showed both. And then uh, we also wanted to see if uh, our trust metric predicts uh, user behavior and uh, if uh, uh, the users follow the trust metric. So if I show a, a high trust score, if the user will give more than if I show a low trust score. So um, we, did, uh, we, we uh, did some statistics on the traces uh, of collaboration. And um, here I have a, a box plot for, um, for the averages of uh, net sending amount for senders or receiver, it's both roles. Yeah, so uh, here I have this curve, it's showing uh, without identity, and this one with identity. Here I have without trust, and here I have with trust. So this is uh, without trust and without identity. This one is uh, um, with trust without identity. This one is uh, with identity with trust, and this one without trust and with identity. So uh, we see that generally, so this curve is above the other, so uh, it's better to have with identity than without identity. And we also see that the slopes of the curves are increasing, so they are positive. So it means if I, um, uh, sh if I show trust, it's better than if I don't show. Also here, if I show trust, it's better than if I don't show. How many, how many rounds or trials? Yeah, so uh, we had uh, um, each game, each user played 25, uh, uh, 25 uh, rounds, and uh, we ensured that, that uh, it plays uh, at each five, uh, it plays five times with every other user. But you didn't know when uh, you played with somebody else. Yeah. Uh, yes. So uh, we see that uh, so either trust score or nickname improves the measure. But uh, if I show both of them with ID and uh, with trust, it's somehow close to uh, with ID, without trust, and uh, uh, with trust and without ID. So they are some, some, somehow close. So, so trust score is the most effective. Um, uh, at least as, if, as effective. Yeah, as effective. as effective as identity, at least. Yeah. No, but the sudden, I mean, the increase is substantial, yeah. right? Yeah, so it's yeah. strange. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. So uh, the same uh, behavior happens for the sending percentage for the other dependent measure. And now uh, we wanted to look in more detail to see uh, the differences between the simple game compared with all the other games. Okay, what we showed before is just on the graphic, so it's not very precise. We wanted to do uh, more analysis, more precise. So we did a PRT test for the net sending by senders. And so we compared the simple game with uh, the identity game, with the trust game, and with the combination of both. Okay? And uh, uh, so we obtained, uh, uh, we obtained uh, significant p-values. Here I have uh, negative values because uh, people send more in uh, uh, identity game, um, trust game, uh, the, the one where I showed the trust. We call it information game. We call it information game because we didn't want to the user to know that there is a trust that we computed. So we want it to be uh, uh, neutral. Yeah? Uh, so uh, the, the values that people send in these games is uh, higher than they send in simple game. Okay, that's why you have here negative value. The same happens for receivers and also for the other measures. 
we have uh, somehow significant uh, uh, the same uh, behavior. We have significant values. So uh, we see that there is really a difference between the simple game and all the other games. And then uh, we looked. So now, now we show that there is a difference between simple game and all the other games. But what about all the other games compared among them? So we we uh, we use the kolmogorov smirnov uh, uh, test, and uh, we computed the p-values. Here is for senders, and uh, this is for receivers. Okay. So here I have a simple game, the identity, the trust, uh, where I have the trust score, and the combined games. And we see so the the simple game. If I compare simple game with this one, it's significant, significant, significant. So there is a difference between them. But uh, if I compare this game with this one and this with this, I see there is no significance here. So I cannot say which one is better. Okay, they are comparable. So for the moment, we can say this: that all of them are better than simple game and are comparable. Okay. So uh, I can just uh, we can just sh uh, say that showing partner score or identity could improve cooperation between users. Uh, that there is no behavior difference with only trust score relative to only identity, and that showing both does not improve significantly uh, just by showing uh, only one of the features, trust or identity. Uh, and then, uh, the so next what does it say, really, that um, showing either is... Yeah, knowing your trust and knowing your name helps. Yeah, yeah well, either is okay, yes. right? Yes. I mean, it's, it's, yes. That means why would I... It's put, not counter -intuitive. That means why, why would I invest much time in developing uh, trust when I already have identity? Wow. So what we, what, we, what we want, we are talking, okay, at, uh, at this moment, we want to show that it's comparable with identity. Because when I go to large-scale settings, which is our context, mm -hmm. I will not be able to remember all the other people and the interactions that I have. Okay. It's fine if I know uh, it's about three people, right? You mm. said something like three people, and they had. You can remember the mem you can the memory can remember. Uh, I remember all of them. <laughs> <laughs> all the <laughs> right? Sure, except. <laughs> <laughs> So a linear scale would be a useful audience. Yes, that's the question. Yes. So, so. In the, did the trust score have any information that wasn't in the identity? That is, so no, the no. trust was just based on their interactions with yes, you. Yes, yes. There, with there you. were nothing uh, related to identity, no. And you but, couldn't remember uh, the trust scores because they were changing each time. You see? So you could not say that uh, trust score replaces the identity I mean, uh, that by seeing just the trust score, you would remember the identity, because the trust score is changing each time. Right. It's dynamic. But, it's, yes, but it's the dynamic. Tr trust score is only computed as a function of interaction between me and that person. Yes, yes. yes. So, it, so you could so, have a trust score that's based on that person's interaction with everybody in the group. Yeah, this right. this and is what we call reputation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But we didn't look at that. Okay. So now it's only individual. Yes. But trust score is historical. Yeah, about the interaction that I have between but two people. But over a period of time. Mm -hmm. Sorry? Over, over a, a period of time. Yeah, yeah, yes, 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 yes. And now if I want to compute the reputation, maybe I will uh, aggregate uh, the trust of all the others in this person. I can have a weighted function there somehow. Uh, that there are methods that do that, but we didn't look at that. Yes? How consistent was the basic behavior of people? So did the trust scores change very much? So, uh, so, so yes, it, it changed. It changed. We show real. we showed that there are people that had fluctuating behavior. Exactly what she was mentioning before. They wanted to have a high trust, and then they deceived. They were sending zero. They deceived the partner. And and that would sh show up in the trust score. Yes. So yes. 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 This is reflected by our trust metric that is against this uh, this fluctuation. Yeah. Uh, excuse me. Yes. If that doesn't want to share, then like, will it classify as less trust? And like, let us say uh, the reason for not being to send, uh, sending for others is like, you some things like you doesn't want to share. Uh, uh, you want to make now the connection with collaborative editing, sharing documents? Yes. Yeah, that's a long way. We are not yet there. This <laughs> is just a simple game. Yeah, but it's it's uh, yeah. We want yeah. Could be this, but it's still not. 
Here we are talking about money, there we talk about sharing uh, documents. Uh, yeah, there is knowledge. We have to define a payoff function. Uh, it's a long way, we didn't go into that yet. Yeah, yes. So I have a question for the use case of your method. So the use case is just for sharing one document? Uh, in trust gain, there is no sharing of documents. No, no, the whole, the whole thing. Thing before, so, yes, yes, yeah. yes. So it is for sharing document. Yeah. And so why, why one document should be shared with more than 50 person? Why, why would you need that? Yeah. Okay, okay. So I give you examples. Okay. Yeah. So uh, uh, there is, uh, I, I'm not, I don't know if you look uh, Game of Thrones, for instance. Yeah. Okay. So it's, uh, it's, start, it's always uh, coming out on Sunday. So we in Europe, at least in France, we look at it on, on uh, Monday evening, because here it's coming Sunday, and, and uh, in between, there are a lot of people, uh, fans of this, that go and translate, so it's, they translate in collaboration, and there are many of them, there are more than 50, okay? Then, uh, uh, what can I give? Uh, I mean, in a conference where you have a lot of people that take uh, notes, it's something I, I've seen there are conferences now that uh, put this into place. They let users to collaborate on this, uh, to, to take notes. Uh. But somebody is going to edit someone else's note? Uh, yes, it could be, yes. Uh, I mean, uh, maybe you write, uh, you, write, um, you write immediately what, what you hear, but you have a lot of errors. So maybe somebody else can go and correct the errors. I'm sorry, I don't stay here. No, no, no. <laughs> no I've changed. <laughs> That's okay. Okay. So again, uh, is the recent behavior more important than? Ah, um, yes. We looked at this. At uh, Valerie suggested the peak value. Um, Alpha yeah, peak value. That yeah. it says that in psychology, yeah. it is that you remember the uh, you remember the the last experience. And the most uh, extreme, extreme yeah. one. Yeah. Marco probably. Yeah. So uh, yeah. in fact, this uh, value is somehow included in the. And the other thing that would interest me is how is it uh, robust with respect to attacks? But we can talk about it later. Yes. Uh, we yeah yes yes. Uh, mm -hmm. We uh, analyze that too. Yeah. I didn't include here. So did you see some typical kind of strategies used or something like that, like tit for tat or something like that? Uh, we didn't look into that exactly. We could look, yeah. It yeah. Could be, uh, but you know, the, the, the problem is we only have how many groups per. But we only have. We have uh, six sessions. Yeah. And, uh, five sessions, six uh, six people each yeah. session. So 30, 30 behaviors. So if we started splitting by strategy, we really were running out. We were running out of degrees of freedom pretty, oh, yeah. pretty fast. And we analyzed our data at the group level, by the way, not at the individual level, which changes the stats yeah. enormously. Okay, so just the, the last um, the last things we analyzed, it was uh, uh, to check if uh, uh, our trust function is correct. I mean, because I can I can have a wrong trust function, and I can make users believe my trust function. Okay, so we wanted to show that this this is not the case that this reflects uh, user behavior. So uh, in the simple game and the identity game, the user has no trust about the other user. So in fact. Uh, uh, here, the behavior should correlate with the trust score of that user, okay? And in, in the other two games where I have uh, the trust score, where I show the user the trust score and where I show both trust score and identity, uh, the, the user uh, has, the inf uh, has the information of the trust score of the partner, okay? So there should be a, there should be a reaction to the, to the trust score partner. And now uh, I have two roles. I have sender and the receiver. So the sender, at the beginning when he sends, he's, he's, uh, uh, I should have two predictors. I should have the predictor that is uh, my, uh, my own trust score, but also the uh, partner trust score, because that user is seeing the partner trust score. While if I am a receiver, I, uh, I, have as a predict I should have as a predictor my own trust score the partner trust score, but also uh, the amount the user sent me, because maybe it makes a difference. Even if a user has a high trust score, if he sent me 
only one oh, euro. Yeah. yeah, yes. It's uh, it's less than if he sends me ten euro. Okay. So we, we looked at this uh, uh, this multiple regressions, and I have here, uh, and then I will finish. So um, for the uh, for the send for the sending percentage, uh, if you are sender, uh, so. Um, we did multiple regression and we have the two predictors, the own trust score, so of you as yourself, and the partner trust score. Uh, so here we, we obtain significance, so it means that our, our trust function is good. It reflects the behavior of user. And uh, uh, here I have, if I show the trust, this one is the games where I have with trust, it's also significant. So. Uh, if I show the trust, if you are a sender, the users listen to this trust. Now, uh, if I don't show the trust in the simple game, uh, and with identity here, I could say that uh, th it could be okay for identity, but, but uh, it's, uh, so identity could replace trust, but it's, uh, it's maybe uh, not that good. I, I will not say uh, that uh, uh, identity is not serving at anything, but at least uh, if you have trust, it could do a better job. Am I right? Yes. Because <laughs> sometimes it's uh, with the interpretation, it's binary, but <laughs> it's with the part of statistics. Yeah. Uh, so uh, then for receiver, uh, we obtained for the own trust value, we have significance, so it's, it's, it's uh, our trust function is good. But uh, we didn't obtain significance for the partner trust score and the amount. And here we need some to do some more work to see what is the interaction between uh, uh, between those uh, those variables, <coughs> those predictors. Yeah. yeah so, so what what is summary? No, I didn't follow this. Yeah. So so what is the summary of the slide? What what, what is it here? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, here is if you are receiver. Okay. okay. We did a multiple regression with three predictors. Mm -hmm. One of them is your own trust value. Mm -hmm. Okay. The own trust value. So, uh, so that is the no correlation with the receiver. Yeah. If you are a receiver and your own trust value is uh, is uh, correlated with uh, the with the, the 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 sending back percentage. Okay. It means uh, my my mm -hmm. trust metric is good one. I can reflect well your behavior. You see, so, so here I don't look to the partner trust score, it's just I look if my trust metric could predict what is your next behavior. Okay, so by knowing a set of behaviors is if I am able to predict the next one. And you don't know your trust score. You don't know no. your trust score, no, no. <coughs> so here is just this that it's showing. Okay. Maybe I can explain. So, so you, if I, if, so, so, so does here, it, here so does it predict or does it not? Here, predict? It predicts. It's so, that, so that here it's, it could be the the simple game where I have no trust, no identity, nothing, but my trust metric is able to predict what you will do next. What might be if you if you yeah. give me, I think you you in machine learning you do a lot of this kind of. Mechanism. So if I have high trust score, I'll. The yeah, I am predicting that you sent a lot. Yeah, you're yes. trustworthy yes. guy. Yes, yes, yes. So yes. basically, reciprocity is what you're saying. Uh, well, it's it's. You're, that you're if, if I'm good, then I expect people to be good. No, it's no, you're a trustworthy it's, person, and I'm predicting that you're a trustworthy person. I my algorithm predicts you're a trustworthy. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, you so will if you if you did a set of did, movements, and, yeah. I see a set of movements. Okay, I am able to predict what is your next movement. Yeah. Based on my trust. Ba based yeah. on the yeah. trust metric that we built. Yeah. And that's true whether or not anybody is seeing trust score yes. values. So this is valid for all the games. Yeah. But this is just their their final trust value for the next interaction. Yeah, we told the, the function or all the good things What's their did? trust yeah. value yeah. of the first interaction? Uh, just at the beginning, I have a, 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 a zero 05 we put at the beginning. And then you play. Mm -hmm. Then you play. Next time you give me, uh, I don't know, you give me 10, let's say, okay? So you have a high trust score. Uh, next time you again give me high, okay? So
So I know to predict that the third time you give high. You're a trustworthy person. Yeah. Well, for us, it's the interaction. It I think in machine learning you have this. So, uh, so is it fair to say that the summary of past behavior is reflective of how you predict? Yes, 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 exactly. yes, yes, yes. And then here, uh, that's it's, where we have some problems. So, so, so my other question would be in the context of attacks, right? So, uh, if I behave well and then suddenly yes, I change my this thing, then, so we need this. to see whether yeah. it we, works yeah. out. We uh, should do okay. we should do some uh, studies on that. Okay. Uh, it was suggested also. I gave the talk in psychology, and they suggested uh, uh, they suggested me in the department of Valley, They suggested me to look at how um, how how robust is for attacks. If I show a, a wrong trust value, so this is called yeah. sleeper attack in the trust literature, where yes. if you, you kind of show good behavior and then suddenly you stab on the yes, back yes, and yes. Uh, and are users yeah. blindly following yeah. these values yeah. or yeah. You know, will they notice? Yeah. But with this slattering attack, we have the, the trust metric should deal with that because we. So we you, you at this. if you penalize recent behavior significantly yeah. more uh, than the past, yeah. Yeah. So we like do it takes a long punishing. time to acquire good yeah. trust score, but it falls precipitously right. if you do behave badly. Yes, 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 yes. So if you actually work, I capture Nash equilibrium. Nash equilibrium? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, so you capture this if somebody... <laughs> so the Nash equilibrium for the theoretical game, for the theoretical trust game, is that users send zero. Yeah. This is the theoretical. But you can and stop people don't do that. <laughs> and people don't do that. This is interesting with this trust game. Yeah. People don't do that. Nash equilibrium may not be always a natural equilibrium for human beings. Right. Yeah. For example, yes. Q, yeah. Q is one of such things. So. I think it, does, it doesn't uh, depend on the ego. The, uh, the point is that you should keep the average, the equilibrium. I, I don't see any input dependency. Well, that should be the same. Yeah. You should actually find a setting. What is win, what is lose? Yeah. So, uh, and what is, where, where is the equilibrium? Uh, the equilibrium, it is proven theoretically. I can show you. Afterwards, I can show you papers where they did that. It's, uh, um, the equilibrium will be uh, that people do not cooperate. They send zero, and then the corporation starts stops. That's so what Dash predicts. Yes. In reality, it's that. But yes. That's not what people do. Okay. Because in in that's order in order famous. that you in order that you earn most is you send zero to the other at a yeah. certain moment, and if you do that, uh, people will not send you back anything. So then it will be zero zero. Mm. Okay. So uh, that's uh, simply the one the counter example of not following Nash equilibrium is for me queues. Yeah. So there is always an incentive for me to go and stand in front of people where <laughs> some people are standing in queue. But we follow the queue because even though there is a lesser incentive to go and stand behind a person, there is a kind of mentality for human mm beings. -hmm. So that's not Nash equilibrium actually. Yeah. Okay. So um, yes, yeah, so by this one, so the, uh, we the results of uh, the, the previous two slides is that um, uh, the trust metric reflects user behavior. Users listen to the trust metric, but we don't know there what's happening. So the sender's net sending amount do not affect to the receiver's return percentage. Okay, so we don't we have to investigate more uh, more interaction there between the parameters to see exactly what is happening. Um, so, um, what what we that are the design implications of these studies is that, um, in, especially in the context of large scale collaboration, the trust based system could be a replacement of identity based systems. Okay, so uh, instead of knowing the identity of the the partner, which anyway I will not be able to remember in a large scale settings, I could use uh, uh, values based on trust that reflect the previous collaboration. Uh, so um, we are working on a, on a project that is called Open Pass. It's a very big project with um, with the industrial scene France, where we want to develop, in fact, uh, the French Google Doc. So based on the peer to peer collaboration, and uh, um, it is a big project. So we have 236 man years, uh, and um, uh, th there we can op we are uh, applying. Uh, our knowledge on uh, data application, also user studies, and maybe we get them uh, interested on this uh, trust-based access control. Yes? 
so you said the French uh, collaboration tool, is it going to be open source? Or? Uh, yeah, so it's, it's a way to open source it. Yes, and uh, uh, thank you very much for the talk. And if you want to see more about the team, you can go at this website. There is a project called uh, a slide wiki. So maybe words that you have a look. So it's uh, what, what's wiki, the name of the slidewiki.com. Slidewiki.com. Yeah. Okay, we have so a, these partners uh, that we have. Is one is uh, working with wiki systems. Yeah, so that's maybe that's another uh, yeah. wiki system. Yeah, that yes. has a great idea, even especially because you are you also like to include some semantic things. Mm -hmm. So. I yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't, I have no knowledge, but uh, you guys here, maybe have yes. <laughs> semantics. So when you say design implication, uh, and try to use this trust model for the replacement of identity, how far this game can be generalizable is a question. Yes. I, I, I'm just, because this is a, this is a very specific game which talks about Yes, uh, we have to map, we have to map uh, the collaborative editing. Yeah to a game that is closer, but yeah. if you would have started from the beginning mapping that mm -hmm. to, uh, to, 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 to uh, uh, our uh, trust-based collaboration, then we would obtain results and we would not know <coughs> how to compare. Like that, we, we did a small problem yeah. and the trust game is very much used. So we can compare with existing uh, studies yeah. because we, had also, we can take also data for the simple trust game and we obtain that our trust metric, for instance, it reflects the behavior of user. So without using our experience, okay, we have a large set of data. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much, Claudia. Thank you. Thank you.